Tonight, the shocking death of David Carradine. Found in a Bangkok hotel room, hanging by a rope in a closet, according to police. The Kill Bill star had a cult following that spanned 50 years. I have no wish to fight with you. Director Quentin Tarantino, Vivica Fox, Rob Schneider, and Carradine's manager tell us what they know about their friend. Plus whale wars, high stakes drama on the high seas. You're too close to the whales. You're too close to the whales. The extreme reality stars ram ships, throw acid, do whatever it takes to save whales. Are they going too far? But first, Queen Noor is here on President Obama's Middle East trip and his bold bid for peace is next on Larry King Live. Lots to do tonight. Good evening. We begin with Her Majesty Queen Noor, the widow of the late King Hussein of Jordan. She's with us in the nation's capital. President Obama, as you know, reached out to the Muslim world in a major speech today at Egypt's Cairo University. Let's watch. I've come here to Cairo to seek a new beginning between the United States and Muslims around the world, one based on mutual interest and mutual respect, and one based upon the truth that America and Islam are not exclusive and need not be in competition. Instead, they overlap and share common principles, principles of justice and progress, tolerance and the dignity of all human beings. Your Majesty, thanks for being with us. How did he do today? It was an extraordinary speech. It, it was historic. It, it provided uh, 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 extraordinary context, historical, social, cultural, spiritual for so many issues of concern, not only to the Arab and the Muslim world, but also to the larger world, I think. Um, his presence uh, coming to the Arab world and speaking to an Arab audience um, w was extremely important in terms of making a connection and the comprehensive nature of his remarks, the vast array of subjects that he uh, discussed with a great deal, I think, of balance and wisdom was very, very valuable. How's it going to resonate with the young Muslims. I think we're seeing it, uh, that it's resonating very positively. The spirit of it, the tone of it, the, uh, the truthfulness of it, the uh, courage, I think, that it took, the balance, uh, all of that um, has resonated well. Uh, right now, the, the enormous challenge that lies ahead of both the president and, as he very clearly laid out, Palestinians, Arabs, Israelis, and the international community is where do we go from here? How do we follow up on, on the principles he laid out in these remarks? Your Majesty, he took on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, talked about a two-state solution. Let's watch. If we see this conflict only from one side or the other, then we will be blind to the truth. The only resolution is for the aspirations of both sides to be met through two states where Israelis and Palestinians each live in peace and security. That is in Israel's interest, Palestine's interest, America's interest, and the world's interest. He uh, took on both sides, though, Your, Your Majesty. He, uh, Israel's got to stop the settlements. Hamas has got to stop the violence. Any chance either side is going to listen? Well, certainly he made the point that it's, it's in the interests of every side that these steps be taken and that we move to dialogue, that we move to respecting previous agreements, that we, removed, we uh, move to accepting that no people are going to live in security unless all are living in security. And he emphasized the importance of listening, learning, and working together to achieve this. But he is absolutely right that what he was laying out is in the interests of Israelis, Palestinians, Arabs, Americans, and, and the world. So our security, all of us, our security depends on taking these new steps and breaking this vicious cycle of violence.
What do you think your late husband would have thought of him? Well, I think my, my husband would have delighted in the speech because in so many respects the speech was the message of my husband as well. Uh, the importance of dialogue, the importance of, of, of listening, respecting one another's stories, of respecting the suffering. He talked about the suffering of the Jewish people, their persecution, the Holocaust. He talked about the suffering of the Palestinians, their occupation, the settlements, the living daily with humiliation and with lack of hope for the future, and how this is not a recipe for for a future of peace and security, and how the, it is so important that there be a partnership, a partnership that includes the young people, the appeal to young people in, in, in all of our communities, um, in their hands and will, will lie the future, and a different kind of future. How will it go in your country? How will it go in Jordan? I think, I think it will resonate well. I think people in Jordan, again, as through the Arab and the Muslim world, will be looking for policies on the ground to change. And they have the president made very clear Palestinians, Arabs, Israelis, and Americans all have new responsibilities, or they have responsibilities to assume in a new, more constructive, more engaged fashion. And we all have to look at ourselves, and we have to um, build on that common ground and, and emphasize that common ground that does bind us all through our values, through yeah. our faiths, um, and through our aspirations for the future and our interdependence, which he also emphasized. Always great seeing you. Next time, a lot more time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, very you much, Your Harry. Majesty. Thank you. Queen Nora. What a lady. Quentin Tarantino is here. We're going to talk about David Carradine's death. Others are with us, too. It's next. Because he's a very... Having diabetes feels like a storm cloud. My life is a little harder with diabetes. Sometimes I miss out on fun activities. Checking my blood sugar at first, I didn't like it, but it was actually that bad. Rain uses the contour meter from Bayer, the only meter that's easily personalized. And now, with Bayer's new Simple Saver program, save up to $360 a year on testing supplies. And that's a simple win. Make testing more affordable with Bayer. Visit BayerSimpleSaver.com to find out more. He's online! Oh no, we can call for help! What are you doing? Filling my own Capital One credit card. Look, I can upload my own photo. We have internet access? Mmm, <laughs> here's a good one. I was full for three days. Cheeseburger! No! Personalize your card at Capital One Card Lab by uploading your own photo at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Celebrate Larry King's New York Times bestseller, My Remarkable Journey, with your remarkable questions. Hi, Larry. I don't know how you do it. Put Larry King in the hot seat. Submit your questions, please, for Larry, and you can win a trip to L.A. Log on now for details. Nancy Grace states her case every night on HLN. Brainwashing the S. Witness Nancy Grace every night, 8 and 10 Eastern on HLN. Starting a new garden doesn't have to be backbreaking. Not when you have the Mantis Tiller Cultivator. It does all the hard work for you. The Mantis Tiller weighs only 20 pounds. It's easy for anyone to handle. The powerful two-cycle engine spins the patented tines deep into the soil. They dig down, cutting through the hardest clay and tangled weeds. They're so tough, they're actually guaranteed never to break. Yet the Mantis maneuvers nimbly, even in the tightest places. Tilling, weeding, and cultivating have never been easier. Now you can get this amazing Mantis tiller cultivator at huge factory direct savings. Plus, we'll give you this border edger free. Use the Mantis for a full year. And if you're not delighted, return it for a prompt, no questions asked refund. Call now and we'll send you complete information. It's yours free with no obligation. Call 1 800 335 9236. That's 1 800 335 9236. Call 1 800 335 9236 today. Raw, honest reporting. Anderson Cooper 360. CNN tomorrow night, 10 Eastern. Uh, one quick note, on uh, June 19th, I'm going to be at the Encore Hotel, Steve Wynn's Encore Hotel in Las Vegas, doing a one-man comedy act. My wife, Sean, will open with her songs. I think you'll enjoy it. It'll be a lot of fun and guaranteed a lot of laughs. If you'd like to make reservations, you just go to on the website to uh, EncoreLasVegas.com. EncoreLasVegas.com, Friday night, June 19th. Going to send some of the proceeds to my cardiac foundation.
David Carradine found dead and, according to a Thai police official, hanging by a nylon rope in a hotel room closet in Bangkok. The rope apparently from the hotel room curtains. Carradine's career included more than 100 feature films, two dozen television movies, and theater work. He was part of an acting dynasty. He was 72 years old. With us is the famed director, Quentin Tarantino. He directed David in Kill Bill. Carradine, of course, was Bill. Chuck Binder is David Carradine's manager, or was his manager, sadly. In Boston is Rob Schneider, who directed and acted with Carradine in Big Stan. And in Los Angeles as well, the wonderful Michael Madsen, actor and friend. He hosted David's Wedding in 2004. They worked on several films together. Michael, I understand you spoke to the widow today. I spoke with her this morning, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that if I was going to come on television and talk about David, that it was going to be all right with her and if there was anything special that she wanted me to um, say or not say that it was going to be fine. How's she doing? Well, understandably, I mean, I don't think she's doing very well. She's not the type to um, jump up and start talking to everybody and um, I uh, think she's pretty confused and she would really like to find out the truth of what happened. Quentin, how did you hear about it? I literally, uh, I'm still in a state of shock. I literally heard about it uh, noon today. I got it very recently. So I, I know pretty much only what you just read at the, at the, in the front. What was he like to direct? He was a dream. I mean, because? He was, well, he was, well, he, well, he's a fantastic actor and he's a great character actor. I think he's also one of Hollywood's um, great mad geniuses when it comes to actors. You have these like kind of wild men actors <laughs> and, and he was one of them. And uh, Christopher Walken might be one of them, a few guys like that. And David Carradine was definitely one of them. And it was, it was a, just a pleasure to work with him. Chuck, ought to be tremendous. How long were we as manager? Uh, the last six years. What was he like to work with? He was great, really collaborative with directors, got along with actors great, was friends with the directors, friends with producers. People kept rehiring him. He was, you, you wish you had more clients like that. Did you learn anything about the death today? Did you talk to Thailand? Uh, last night at midnight, my phone rang, and the director called me and, and said that there was a problem on the... They were doing the a movie, movie there? Yeah, he was shooting a picture called Stretch there, and he, uh, he said, you know, that, uh, David was dead. And I, I thought, I thought it was a bad joke. I really did. What do you make of all the stories about the hanging and the suicide, and obviously I, we don't know enough yet, I but... I don't think he was suicidal by any stretch of the imagination. None? You don't think so at all? Yeah, I, I got well, I talked to Annie about that, yeah. and she said that, you know, the most important thing that she wanted everybody to know is that David was not suicidal, that he wasn't depressed, and that he wasn't going to about to do something like that, especially when he had a job and working. Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is, I mean, that's the thing that I really just can't get my head around, because there might have been a period of David's long life that he could have been suicidal, but this wasn't the time. <laughs> Do you agree, Chuck? Yeah, I mean, he had three more movies to come back and do. He was shooting this picture there. He just bought a brand new car. The he was really going happy. Well. The marriage was great. He had four kids. They were lovebirds. They yeah. really uh, were. Yeah. Rob, I know Rob Schneider. You worked with uh, David in Big Stan, right? Yes. Yeah, well, I, I talked to Annie Carradine, David's wife, a few hours ago, and, uh, and she wanted to, you know, uh, to let people know that everything you've heard in, in the in the press right now is just rumor. There is no uh, there is no official statement from the authorities in Bangkok about what's happened. Everything you've heard is rumor. And one thing that you that Quentin and um, um, and Annie and I know is that there's no way that David and Chuck will tell you there's no way that David killed himself. I mean, he, this guy had everything going for him. He had a beautiful young family, people who really loved him, and he was really on an upswing. I mean, this is a guy who was alive. I mean, besides you know being part of this Hollywood royalty, the Carradines, and this, he, he was a living legend. And really, people were, were coming around and really appreciating him. And I mean, he couldn't do all the work, as Chuck uh, Bender, his manager, would tell you. He could not uh, do all the work that was being offered to him. So he was on an upswing. Uh, so there's, uh, I'm convinced. There's no way that he, could, he, he would have killed himself. Everybody here seems convinced of that. By the way, younger viewers, of course, knew him as Bill in Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill films. He earned a Golden Globe nomination for that role. Watch a little. Clark Kent is how Superman views us. And what are the characteristics of Clark Kent? He's weak. He's unsure of himself. He's a coward. Clark Kent is Superman's critique on the whole human race. Clip the 
show of David. <laughs> I forgot where I was for two seconds. It was just yeah. digging on him doing it. Yeah, it brings back a good memory, doesn't that it? That is a good memory. Nah, he was super cool. He's if, he, if, he, if he did, if it's not a, if it's not a suicide and the, the thing is so strange, what do you make of it, Chuck? Uh, I mean, I think because it's under, I think it's under investigation. Could it be accidental? Know. I don't know if you want to call it accidental, but... You know, I mean, I, I got You're some suspicious? calls from Thailand today from a producer that had worked with him, and, you, you know, I, I don't want to get in the middle of this whole investigation, but this guy said to me for sure there was foul play. David had ten foul rules play. to live by. He had what? He once told me that he had ten rules to live by, and I don't remember all of them, but uh, one of them was never buy anything from someone who's out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey, Larry. <laughs> he was a very smart guy. Larry, uh, Rob, I yeah. I, I was I was doing a scene with um I was doing a scene with David and we were doing the Cali, the Filipino Cali Escrima Sticks. And uh, he didn't like to rehearse a lot of this. He just liked to wing it, you know, because he's a natural. He was really a, a fantastic athlete. And as Quentin will tell you, when you get hit by David, you stay hit. Anyway, <laughs> there was a rhythm that we were trying to do, and he hit me and he broke my finger. <laughs> and I, you know, and I, I worship David, and I, I love David, and I, I had to walk away so I wouldn't raise my voice. And as I'm walking away, <laughs> I, I hear this voice coming up behind me, and he says, Rob, I hope this doesn't affect our relationship. <laughs> Let me get a break. This is uh, right. this is part of what actress Martha Plimpton, Carradine's niece, had to say today. My uncle David was a brilliantly talented, fiercely intelligent, generous man. He was the nexus of our family in so many ways. Drew us together over the years. Kept us connected. I adored him as a child, and as an adult, I admired and respected him. We'll all miss him terribly. Back in sixty seconds. In every drop of Florida orange juice, you will find a long list of essential vitamins and nutrients, things your body needs to support its immune system. And all of it is 100% all natural. Now, take that drop and make a whole glass. Florida orange juice, healthy, pure and simple. Region strength and stability give you more peace of mind. And Life Green checking and savings give you more green. Earn more green with a bonus of up to $250 on savings accounts. Do more for the environment with features that use less paper. And you can do it all simply with free, convenient e-services. Plus, we have Life Green accounts to help your business get more green, too. Region's Life Green checking and savings for you and your business. It's time to expect more green. You changed my life so much. I share something with David Carradine. Didn't know I did. We both got stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1997. Vivica Fox is on the phone. She worked with David in Kill Bill. What was your reaction today, Vivica? I was absolutely shocked and devastated this morning. I was watching uh, CNN, and it came on this morning and scrolled across, and, you know, they're like breaking news to actor David Carradine, which immediately caught my attention. And I was just like maybe in a hospital or something. They said, dead. It was like, what? You know, as everyone has also stated, this is a man that was so full of life and love that I really just cannot see him taking his life. What was he like to work with? Oh, the best. I mean, Quentin threw, it, threw us, put us through the most rigorous training schedule for six months, and we all loved him for it, doing Kill Bill. And I got to spend a lot of time with David. And David literally told me stories from the 60s all the way up to his current wife and his family and, you know, all the trials and tribulations that he had been through. And this man was full of life and adventure. And we're going to miss him. I mean, he was just yeah. an absolute, absolute genuine soul. Thanks, Vivica. Gift. Thanks for your memories. Thanks for calling us in. We'll come back with more of our panel. Quentin has a story about casting him. Chuck Norris said this, I've known David Carradine since the 70s when I was still competing and teaching martial arts, and his TV series Kung Fu was creating so much interest in the sport. I'm deeply saddened by the news of his tragic death. He's a powerful performer, strong personality, commanded attention, had a natural and unforced screen presence. You sometimes forget how versatile and talented he was. More after this. Bugs want in. They want in your kitchen. They want in your bedroom. They want in your bathroom. Fact is, bugs want to make your home their home. But Orkin keeps them out. 
For more than 100 years, Orkin has been keeping pests in their place. No one's better trained or more qualified to treat any kind of pest than the Orkin man. Bugs can be more than a nuisance. They can be a source of germs, bites, and disease. And one-time treatments don't really solve the problem. But you can address this problem right now and save $50 on Orkin's world-renowned pest control service. Just call the number on your screen and we'll give you $50 off Orkin Pest Control Service. Just pick up the phone and save $50 so you can alleviate bug and pest problems right away. You've got nothing to lose but cockroaches, ants, spiders, and other annoying pests. Your local Orkin man knows how important your family's safety and health are to you. That's why he doesn't use cookie-cutter treatments. He takes the time to design a customized plan to protect your home. He'll inspect your home from top to bottom, identifying where pests may hide and breed. He'll treat the perimeter of your home to help keep pests in their place. Then provide ongoing protection to help safeguard your property year-round. And just as important to him is the well-being of your family and pets. The Orkin Man uses environmentally responsible methods that are designed not to harm your household. So call the number on your screen right now and save $50 on Orkin Pest Control Service. Orkin guarantees its service in writing. If you're not satisfied, we're not satisfied. So call now. I can also help protect your home from termites, rodents, and mosquitoes. So don't wait until you see a pest or discover an infestation. Call today. Orkin has the best training, the most experience, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Call right now and get $50 off Orkin's pest control service. Don't just call an exterminator. Call an expert. The Orkin Man. CNN tomorrow night. Campbell Brown, a voice of reason. Persistent, quick, sharp. Brown's reporting is worth cheering. Campbell Brown is back. CNN tomorrow night, 8 Eastern. Time for tonight's remarkable question. An email from Richard in New York. What's the saddest event you had to report live on the air? Answer is obvious. September 11th. September 11th, 2001. That date will inject our brains. Go to CNN.com if you got a question for me, send it in. If I answer it on the air, we'll give you an autographed copy of my new memoir, My Remarkable Journey. You have a chance to win a trip to Los Angeles, see this show live. Back with our panel, let's show a quick clip of David's rise to fame in Kung Fu. Watch. I will meet you in combat, but let it be later. It shall be now. I plead with you. Beg for your own life. Bill Clinton. Well, it was the interesting thing is uh, right at the time when I was kind of finishing writing, I'd actually come across his autobiography. It's called Endless Highway, and I started reading it. And to this day, it's one of the greatest autobiographies I've ever read. It's uh, not only is it a great story, he was a terrific writer. I mean, there was uh, in his writing style, it was a mix of, of uh, Jack Kerouac, of Charles Dickens, and mm. David Carradine, which you would imagine David would be like. And he's got this fantastic, wonderful life to talk about, including all the adventures with John Carradine and the family and everything. And it was just, it was fascinating. And as I was reading it, I was just like, well, this is my bill. This is my guy. It wasn't another movie. It wasn't an audition. It wasn't a, kept having drinks together. It was his autobiography that said, this is the guy. It was a wild movie. What did that movie do for him, Chuck? I think it totally revitalized his career. And, you know, he just, he never stopped working from the moment that movie ended till now. And... Michael, you're very, considered a very versatile actor. You'd agree. Thank you, Larry. Uh, versatility, does it get enough credit? In other words, we, when we think of David Carradine, which uh, people talk about great actors, they don't list him, do they? I think if you become well known for a certain kind of a role, um, people have a tendency to want you to repeat that. Label you. And you can get stuck in a box you know, and be all the same villainous characters. You said, you told me it's his thought. You know, there's so many different things that David was able to do walk into a room and sit down at a piano and start singing somewhere over the rainbow and you don't know those kind of things about <laughs> you, know, 
You, know? you said his father made over 500 movies? David and I talked about his father quite a bit. John Carradine. Uh, John, and he yeah, told me that John made uh, 523 films. And I mean, I can't think of any other actor who made there he is. 523 yeah. pictures. And apparently he did uh, 40 of them without even a credit. Rob, you, you, have, you have a story about a wedding ring? Well, the, you know, when, when uh, David worked on uh, Big Stan and, and, and all his movies, he refused to take off his wedding ring. I mean, that's, that was the thing that was really charming. I mean, he, he said, we got to put something in the script, and he put a leather strap around it, and he just, you know, he would not take it off. And it was a, it was a beautiful little touching thing. And um, I would just say that David Carradine was as good an actor as anybody who had ever appeared on the screen. He was really legendary. Wow. I remember what, the first meeting that I had with uh, Chuck Bender and um, my brother and David was uh, I had heard that he'd read this, my script and uh, he liked it and uh, <laughs> we had lunch together and as we're having lunch I'm, I'm trying to you know gently bring up the script and see if he wants to do the movie and I said so what do you think of the script and he said I didn't I haven't read it <laughs> why are you having lunch with me then he said well why don't you tell me about it so I told him about it at lunch <laughs> for like a half an hour 45 minutes and then after I told him the story he said that sounds great. I'll do it. <laughs> like, there's no one else in Hollywood who would have done something like that. But he, he was that guy, and, and he did do it. It was his legend. And I'll tell you one beautiful thing I'll never forget from David. He called me up the day we, before we started filming. And he says, Rob, it's a miracle to get a film made. And it's another miracle um, to get it, to make it any good, if it's any good. And he said, the third miracle is if you get it released. You know, and so, but I think the last thing he said was if, if, if it could, the third miracle is if it's, if it's any good. And I said, so here's the huh. first of three I mean, miracles. And it was just a beautiful thing. I mean, he was yeah. such a generous, Let he me was get a, a nobleman. I mean. Thank you, Rob. Well said. Uh, director Martin Scorsese shared his thoughts with us about David. I was deeply saddened by the news of David Carradine's passing. We met when we made Boxcar Bertha together almost 40 years ago. I have very fond memories of our time together and that picture and on Mean Streets where he agreed to do a brief cameo. David was a great collaborator, uniquely talented actor, and a wonderful spirit. We'll be right back. When my allergies hit, I've got a great new way to hit back. I get Claritin Clear with new Claritin Liquid Gels, the first and only non-drowsy allergy medicine with pure liquid power. Claritin Liquid Gels, a powerful new way to live Claritin Clear. Has progress taken us to a better place? I'd say it's taken us for a ride. Honestly, what thanks do we owe progress? We're up to our necks in landfill and down to the wire and resources and climate change is out to get us. That's why progress plays no role inside Post Shredded Wheat. Here, we put the no in innovation. Post Original Shredded Wheat is still just the one simple, honest ingredient which naturally comes with vitamins, minerals, and fiber. All we did was make it spoon size. Did we go too far? A passing sun shower nearly every day. This is what distinguishes the exceptional oranges we use to create Grey Goose L'Orange flavored vodka. A full, authentic taste. Best served simply. Grey Goose L'Orange. More people than ever before are getting their entertainment news from TV's most provocative entertainment news show. Showbiz Tonight. HLN every night, 11 Eastern. 98.1 CHFI plays Toronto's light favorites. You're everything. Like Michael Bublé and John Mayer. From Madonna to Elton John to Beyonce. Plus, CHFI has the most music for your workday. And Aaron and Mike in the Morning. Only on Toronto's number one choice for light favorites. 98.1 CHFI. I watch it every week, and it's taught me a lot, especially with my son here, who is still uh, toilet training. I'm not pushing him anymore. It's just like, you know, do you have to go when it's actually working out a lot better? Allison's really good. Call into the show if you have questions. You know, watch it, because usually your uh, problem will always get solved. And then tomorrow, 6 a.m. Now, if you don't settle down, I'm going to have to put one in your kneecap. Why don't you hold it five ways and 
stick it where the sun don't shine. Are you gonna be nice? I've never been nice my whole life. But I'll do my best to be sweet. 18 years ago, David was on this show. We talked about Kung Fu. Watch. Oh, it's really a way of life. It's a, it's a system that tries to kind of improve the quality of a person's life. And, uh, uh, well, if you want to defend yourself or, you know, kick ass, uh, you could probably learn how to do that in about a year. But within uh, 20 years, I've been studying it for 20 years, I still feel I pretty much know nothing about it. I think it would take a whole lifetime to find out. Uh, to, for me, it, to be even able to give you an answer as to what it's really all about. Is, is meditation a key ingredient in it, for want of a better word? Well, it's supposed to be. Uh, it's an important aspect of it. I think with a lot of martial artists that, you know, they do what we see in the movies, you know, kick and punch and uh, uh, defend themselves and take revenge. But... Uh, if you want the whole benefit, yeah, you've got to do some meditation. There's no doubt about, no doubt about it. Another thing great about it, he had a wonderful voice. Oh, yeah. uh, you got a lunch, a kung fu lunchbox? Yes, I do. Watch this, folks. Yeah, this is a, a kung fu lunchbox. Back from the day here. Is it? Here you go. Kids right. bought this, took yeah. it to school, right? It was, well, he, he was a rock star at the time when kung fu came out. So every kid in school had the, the kung fu lunchbox. It even has a nice little thermos in here. What are, what, are, what, are, <laughs> what are you doing with it? Oh, I have a, I have a lunchbox collection. All right, oh, yeah. you know. And, you're a little strange, I, Quentin. Yeah, if I, I've, I've seen you movies. Work with an actor, if I work with an actor who's got a toy or a lunchbox, I get it. All Someone right. said, <laughs> we only have a couple minutes left. Someone said something kind of weird but maybe truthful, that with this mystery around his death and being in Thailand, we may never find out the total answer. Mm -hmm. He would like it that way. Yeah, I we, think he would like it that way. I think it's a typical David I think he would too. way to go. You know? <laughs> the mysterious death of David Carradine. It has a nice sound. Yeah, no, 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 I swear. Like it, but it's autobiography. It's like the last, the last chapter. If the last chapter was the what mysterious gonna... demise of David Carradine, that would Rob, be perfect. what were going to say? I, I, I'll tell you the truth. The truth is, I think that David always had felt bad that he took the kung fu role that was originally originated from Bruce Lee. And I think it's a really odd and beautiful kind of mystery that it's the same way that Bruce Lee. We'll never know exactly what happened with Bruce yeah. Lee. And um, good point. That's a that's a that's a. Do we know anything, Quentin? Do we know Michael or Chuck if any memorial services are planned here? Is that too soon? Well, I haven't found anything out about that, but I would hope that there would be something. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, there will be. I can't yeah. imagine there wouldn't be. I think we'll we'll find out in the next few days, sure. uh, Larry. But I just want to say, uh, David well, quickly, was a, a seeker. Yeah, David was a seeker, and uh, he left a real legend for his friends and his fans. You have all been very kind on short notice to come by, and oh, we appreciate it. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. And save the lunchbox. Oh, I definitely will. Definitely. Quentin Tarantino, Chuck Binder, Rob Schneider, Michael Madsen, and Vivica Fox with us on the phone. The crew of Whale Wars, and video you won't believe until you see it next. Stay with us. Would you like a pony? Yeah. Would you like a pony? Yeah. Here you go. This is for you. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Well, you didn't say you could have a real one. Well, you didn't ask. <laughs> Even kids know it's wrong to hold out on somebody. Why don't banks? We're Ally, a new bank that alerts you when your money can be working harder and earning more. It's just the right thing to do. The better we breathe, the better we perform. The Infiniti VVIL engine creates more power using less fuel. Nothing breathes like it. Nothing performs like it. Available on the Infiniti G Sedan and G Coupe. Now lease an Infiniti G Sedan for $379 a month or get 0.9% APR financing. save up to 65 percent call your travel agent or 1-800-SANDALS 
capturing the beauty of nature. That's my vision. Every day, Transitions lenses are there to help care for my sight. Transitions lenses adjust to changing light to reduce glare and help protect your eyes from UV damage so you can see better today and tomorrow. Live your vision. Transitions, healthy sight in every light. Show us how you live your vision and you could win $10,000. Plus, Transitions will donate $10,000 to the charity of your choice. Enter at transitions.com. What does hope look like? It looks like people with type 1 diabetes who get involved in their own cure. The Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is now funding more human clinical trials and needs more people with type 1 diabetes for this crucial work. Participating in a clinical trial is a way you can play an important role in the fight to treat and cure type 1 diabetes. Be the look of hope and get involved. The world is a vampire. These are their battles. This is their war. Secret destroyers. Everyone's safety is their own responsibility. We got a ship. Yeah, I guess all we got ship. With us are the stars of Whale Wars, which returns for a second season on Animal Planet tomorrow night. They've been called a lot of things, good and bad, as they go after the Japanese ships and the crews that hunt whales. Are they pirates, harassers, conservationists, something in between? Joining us are Captain Paul Watson, Chris Altman, Shannon Mann, and Lawrence DeGroote of Whale Wars. Captain, you started all this. How? Why? Well, I started the uh, organization in 77 because I thought there was a need for, an or for a group to intervene against illegal activities. We're not a protest group. What we do is uh, we go after uh, unlawful activities. And in this case, we're targeting the Japanese who are killing whales in a whale sanctuary. Were you with another group before this? I was a co-founder of Greenpeace originally. But they, you got two activists for them? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not a protester, and it was a protest organization, so I decided to set this up. It's more, much more aggressive. Is it a thin line, but you think protest sounds peaceful, you mean, and you're more aggressive than peaceful? But at the same time, uh, in 30 years, we've never injured anybody. We've never broken a law. So we're, uh, you know, we're walking a fine line, but we're, we're doing the job. How did you enlist the group? Our organization are all uh, volunteers. I mean, I can't buy that kind of passion. No. So, uh, Nobody gets paid? <laughs> no, they, they're, they're volunteers. They came to us as volunteers. And you're a volunteer then, too? I've been doing this ever since I was 18 years old. What do you do for a living? Write, lecture. <laughs> uh, what, what hooked you to it, Chris? Uh, I met uh, someone in Los Angeles um, uh, who was a founder of a nonprofit group here in L.A. and uh, at a scuba show. And ironically, he was um, uh, tabling for Sea Shepherd at the time. I was, a, I was a new helicopter pilot, and I walked up to him and, and asked him if this organization ever needed helicopter pilots. And uh, he said uh, no, and I got to know him, and he got me into environmentalism, and he also introduced me to Paul, and uh, that's how, how I got into it. What, what does Whale Wars do? First of all, how did you get into it? Well, I've, I'm from the prairies, but I've always had a strong connection with nature and love of animals. And so I was doing part-time volunteer work back home. And then I heard Paul Watson speak, and that just can, totally motivated me. And I wanted to join the crew and got on full-time. What do you do for a living? Uh, now I do some contract work, software development, but mostly I volunteer for the organization. And Lawrence, what got you in? Well, I was a former crime investigator for the Dutch Organized Crime Department, focusing on the environmental crimes. And while I was doing that work, I found out that the DA in a lot of cases settles cases, and the economic interests are more important than the consequences for the environment. So I started looking for an organization that's not willing to compromise, and Sea Shepherd came on my path. Captain, uh, I don't mean to be blunt, but it's a simple question. Why should we care about whales? You know, if we can't save uh, a species as beautiful, as, as intelligent, as socially complex as the whales, I don't see how we're going to save anything in the oceans. And the oceans are in trouble. And quite frankly, if the oceans die, we die. How endangered are they? All of the great whales are endangered. All whaling is illegal. There's been a moratorium in commercial whaling since 1986. So the whales that they're targeting are protected. So when they're doing this, they're committing an illegal act? Yes, they're No matter where they do it? All whaling is illegal, but they're targeting endangered whales in the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary in violation of the Global Moratorium. They're also in contempt of the Australian Federal Court because they prohibited the whaling in the Australian territory. Who are they? The Japanese whaling fleet. 
And why are they whaling, Chris? What are they going to do with this, with the whale? Uh, ultimately, it comes down to money. Um, they, what do they sell the whale for? I mean, for they, they consume it. They consume up to 60 tons of whale meat a year. Oh, um, they eat it. Absolutely. And uh, so it's a profit motive. Uh, they're down there under the guise of research. But at the end of the day, all that meat goes home and winds up in the marketplace or in deep freeze waiting to be eaten at a later time. How do they kill them, Shannon? Oh, it's one of the most horrendous things you'll ever see. Uh, we have footage on Whale Wars this year of a whale being harpooned. So it's an explosive tip harpoon um, which launches into the backside of a whale and takes a long time to, to eventually die. And, that, and Chris took the footage from the helicopter over 25 minutes for that whale to thrash around before it finally died. We've already asked a little of the explanation, but uh, watch what they do now in this Whale Wars clip. and They'll show us something we don't often see. Get ready. Watch. These whales are swimming in 17 knots to try and get away from this ship. They just shot it. That suck. I hope this is something I've never seen. Oh my god. They've got the rifle out on the bow. How do you stand watching it, Lauren? It's horrible. And once you see that in, in, in real life, well, we, saw the, we saw the footage from Chris when he came back, and there's only one thing you want to do, and save those animals, because we see them swimming freely in those waters, and they're so beautiful and magnificent and so important for, for our planet. That do the people killing them seem to care? Not at all. It's just the guy that shoots the harpoon, he's just... He just shoots the harpoon and walks off straight away, and other people come in and they take over. It's just, yeah. It's a business. It's yeah. a machine. More with the Whale Wars fighters. We'll show you an actual battle from their second season next. What's your Cialis moment? When she gives me that look. When at last we're alone. When, when we, we both, both decide. decide. <laughs> Today, guys with erectile dysfunction can be ready with another dosing option from Cialis. Cialis for daily use is a clinically proven low-dose tablet you take every day. So you can be ready anytime the moment is right. So relax and take your time. Tell your doctor about your medical condition and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injuries, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. Today, you have options. Cialis for daily use or 36-hour Cialis. Ask your doctor if Cialis is right for you, so when the moment is right, you can be ready. CNN Sunday, John King has the contacts, the curiosity, and the cool magic wall. The State of the Union with John King. CNN Sunday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. Our hero or heroine of the week this week is Betty McCody. She comes to us from London. She's the leader of the Girl Child Network, GCN. It provides support for young female victims and encourages them to grow and connect and improve their status. How did this start, Betty? It started with a small group of young girls at a school where I was teaching in 1998. And then the girls became more and more in numbers from all the neighborhoods and villages. And now we have got 60,000 girls who are members of this network. How do you build the girls' confidence? We build them through their girls' clubs in schools where we teach girls life skills, empowerment skills, a situation where they have to transform themselves from victims to leaders in their own communities and learn to pick up their pieces with confidence and start a new life. We adore you, Betty. You're our heroine of the week. We salute you. Beginning in a single school, GCN now operates in the majority of Zimbabwe's rural districts is set for regional expansion in Southern Africa. We salute you, Betty. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Larry. Betty McConey, leader of the Girl Child Network.
is sponsored by the Johnson & Johnson Campaign for Nursing's Future. Nurses, you make a difference every day. Nominate a special person at CNN.com slash heroes for the chance to give your hero the recognition they deserve. Right now, there's a nurse saving a life in Baltimore. 20 minutes later, she'll bring one into the world in Seattle. Later today, she'll help an accident victim in Kansas. How can one nurse be in all these places? Through the nurses she taught in this place. Johnson & Johnson knows behind every nurse who touches a life, there's a nurse educator who first touched them. You're a nurse. You make a difference. If you can't be at the U.S. Open, then be everywhere at the U.S. Open. With DirecTV, you'll get four dedicated channels showing nothing but tournament coverage. It's all of Beth Page, and it's only on DirecTV. This yellow one is for my postpartum depression. <laughs> this one, sciatica, whatever that is. I got these after my hysterectomy, or my prostatectomy, or somectomy. And this guy is for the pain from my last hip replacement. And this orange one is... For teens, getting drugs can be as easy as opening your medicine cabinet. When my allergies hit, I've got a great new way to hit back. I get Claritin Clear with new Claritin Liquid Gels. The first and only non-drowsy allergy medicine with pure liquid power. Claritin Liquid Gels. A powerful new way to live Claritin Clear. Answer your financial questions anytime at CNN.com slash Money and Main Street. Jobs, housing, investing, save time and money with great advice from experts and people just like you. CNN.com slash Money and Main Street. Presented by Bank of America. Closed captioning brought to you by Meineke Car Care Center. What do you think? I think I'll go with the basic package. Good choice. Only Meineke lets you choose the brake service that's right for you and save 50% on pads and shoes. Meineke. Head on 360 tonight, the president delivers a historic speech in Cairo, Egypt. His goal, bridging the divide between the U.S. and the Muslim world. The question is, did the president accomplish that? We'll let you decide. Hear the president in his own words, extended portions of his speech and analysis from David Gergen, Christian Amanpour, and others. Back here in the United States, a murder mystery in California. A couple, this couple, murdered in their home. Murderer walked right by their young son as he watched TV. Community shocked. Police are baffled. They want your help. Details tonight. Those stories and the man accused of killing abortion provider, Dr. George Tiller, speaks out from prison. Details on 360. The bridge crew quickly realizes the Delta is heading in the wrong direction. They seem to be having difficulties with their navigation. Season two of Whale Wars on uh, Animal Planet, a very successful program, by the way, premieres tomorrow night, Friday, June 5th. How did you get the idea to put this into television, Captain? Well, the, you know, the biggest uh, rated show on Discovery is, uh, is Deadliest Catch, and uh, it's about some people going out into the uh, remote area in rough weather and catching crabs. And We've I had them on. It was kind of wacky. And, and, uh, <laughs> but I felt, <laughs> I felt it has to be much more compelling to have men and women from around the world go into an even more remote area and even rougher weather to uh, save whales. And um, I thought that it would be something that would people would be interested in. It's a very educational program. What kind of ship are you on? We have uh, a 62-meter vessel called the Steve Irwin, which is a former uh, Royal Navy. The, uh, British Royal Navy vessel. To Steve? Yes, we did. Steve was going to join us, and uh, unfortunately, he died. But you sail out of where? We are. Uh, we sail out of Australia. That's where our base is. So you got to all of you, if you live around here, you got to fly to Australia and then do this. How long are you usually out doing it? We're out for December, January, February, and into March. It's a long trip. Takes its toll, doesn't it? It does. I mean, we're 2,000 miles from anybody, really. Here's a look at an actual battle from Whale Wars. Watch. We're going to get him this time. This is <laughs> this is all lying in the sand, so I just stepped up. Hit those bastards. Too close to the whales. You're too close to the whales. Hang on. Hang on. 
Chris, how do you stop them? What do you do? Our most effective tool is to uh, intervene with our ship and uh, with our and media. Um, is to just get in their way, keep them from trying to, uh, from harpooning whales. Um, if, we can't, uh, if we can't do that, then document them doing these illegal activities and make, make them famous. Yet. Absolutely. You ever physically harmed them, Shannon? No, in 30 years Sea Shepherd history, we've never hurt inj or injured anyone. Despite um, your they, anger and everything. <laughs> yeah, ob obviously. But, I mean, they're they're being very aggressive towards us. And, like and doing we what? had some, well, they oh, they're throwing golf balls and pieces of metal, um, the water cannons. People, people were injured this year. Are you convinced, Lawrence, that you saved many whales? Absolutely. Like last year, we saved over 500 whales, which cut down half the quota, giving them a loss of millions of dollars. And that's what, in the end, what we're trying to achieve, is to, to make them lose as much money as possible. And that's the only way to, these guys will stop, because that's the only language they understand. Uh, are, are they an obvious pain? Our objective is to sink the Japanese whaling fleet economically, and for the last three years, we've cost them their profits. 305 whales saved this year, 500 last year, 500 the year before, and that's we're going to keep this up. As long as we're persistent, we don't retreat, I think we can bankrupt them. That's our objective. Does the Japanese government defend them in any way, Chris? Do they say this is part of a, a major part of our economy, and, for example, in the United States, you kill livestock for food? Well, they certainly do uh, defend themselves. They spent eight, or reported $8 million uh, prepping their fleet uh, with defenses this year. Uh, they wrapped their entire boats with nets, uh, put very powerful water cannons uh, on their ships, and uh, brought uh, broken nuts, bolts, and golf balls. What does the government of Japan say, Shannon? What do they say? Oh, they completely defend themselves. They, they say on what basis? Well, this is, uh, well, they actually use it under the guise of scientific research. They say that they're conducting research down there, but they get back to shore with packaged up whale meat. Nobody believes it. The warriors in the war over whales are coming back in 60 seconds. Don't go away. Oh, why is it raining? Lose the rain. Roger that. No rain, no rainbows. Could you tell us what's going on? Yeah. The cake is en route, the tulips just arrived, and the groom is... He's getting cold feet. I'm okay. No, I'm not. Look, we gotta go now. The light's perfect. We need the stunt groom now. What's a stunt groom? Jackpot. Get work done now. Next, tell Direct Connect with GPS tracking. Only on the Now Network. A million people get their breaking news from CNN through Twitter. No one else even comes close. Follow the leader. Follow at CNN BRK on Twitter. So, Guy, when are you going to make an honest woman out of my daughter, huh? Dad. <laughs> the machine will get it. This is Guy. Leave a message. Hi, this is Tanya from Video Mart. The following Guy. adult titles oh, are yeah. late. Blonde Ambition, Booty yeah. Hunters, and Ordinary People. Guy should have ordered from Rogers On Demand. It offers privacy, convenience, and discreet billing. Go to Channel 100 now. We thought that installing HD would be complicated, but with Rogers, it was easy. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Oh, you just plug it in. Yeah, good job, honey. He's so handy. Get a Rogers HD box and get HD in minutes. It's the easiest way to live life in HD. Campbell Brown is back. CNN tomorrow night, 8 Eastern. Once you encounter the, the humpbacks, you see them alive, and all you want to do is just protect these animals. The sun was in clouds. The sun looked out. Exposed a trail. Mist and spouts. Ships follow. 
Understand what there's a stink bomb you use. What it what? <laughs> yeah. What we, do you do and what does it do? <laughs> we go out there in the in the small boats and we we throw stink bombs on their deck and that way they they the Japanese whalers they can't do their work on the deck. What does a stink bomb do? It's uh, it's butyric acid which is uh, pretty much rotten butter and it's completely harmless and when you smell it you don't want to be near it. It's like it will almost make you vomit and yeah, as soon as we throw that on the deck uh, they're not coming on the deck and if there's whale meat it will contaminate the whale meat and they lose money. But if you're close enough to them, do you smell it too? Oh yeah, big time. We were in the. In the, in the Mile, you can smell it from miles away. I can smell it in the helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Who, what, what is the helicopter doing? The the helicopter has three primary roles: search and rescue in the event that something does happen. Um, also, uh, searching for the fleet, searching for illegal activities on the ocean, and then obviously documenting those uh, activities once we find them. Big scare for our guests might be the ultimate enemy: icebergs. Their <laughs> ship, the Steve Irwin, named after our dear late friend. Faces a frightening adversary this season. Check it out. Your stern is kind of swinging to starboard into a chunk of ice. Whoa! This all coming off the paint here as well. Yeah, right. That's new because this is all like oh, like that. Oh. I see what you're saying. The ice is pushing the steel inwards. It's really scary. And the season is already filmed, right? Yes, it'll be 13 episodes. Uh, more exciting than season one? Uh, far more, because this year, uh, in previous years, we were chasing them. They ran. They couldn't kill whales. This year, they decided to take a stand, and so it became very aggressive. So you see them attacking you, in a way? Right. Absolutely, and attacking the whales. I had to, I had to document um, and I had to follow them hunting and harpooning a whale. As part of the show, do you enter, ever interview government leaders, Australian leaders, Japanese leaders to get viewpoints? I haven't seen the show. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I, I know. We, we, we have no editorial control Absolutely. over the show. I, I do oh, you know, you I do. give them the film. Yeah, we Correct. just air the cameras right. run. Uh, there's no scripts. They just to film what we do, and what they do with the show is, is Animal yep. Planet. They business. have a narrator? Yes. As long as they have their own narrator. Yeah. Do you enjoy watching it? Well, sometimes it's... Uh, it's <laughs> you know what's going to happen, right? So. Yeah, well, <laughs> Shannon and I were watching the park going through the ice, and we were there, and it was actually so well edited, we were wondering if we were actually going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any idea how many whales are out there? Uh, no, uh, they're, they're, they're threatened species. They're, they're targeting fin whales, which are endangered, and they want to go after humpback whales, which are highly endangered. So this is because blatantly illegal. Because better for eating? Well, yeah, they're worth much more. And uh, so they're, they're really targeting protected whales. Do they bother baby whales? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, they kill them. They have killed baby whales. Last year, the Australian government actually was down there and took footage of a mother and baby minke whale being dragged up the slipway of the Nishimaru. Yeah, they're, indiscrim they're indiscriminate. They'll take anything that gets in front of a harpoon boat. And 20% of the, of the females that are taken are, are pregnant. Mm -hmm. All this is for, then, is profit, Lawrence. There's, yeah. no, there's no reason for it. There's no overpopulation of whales that they're doing humankind a good idea by getting rid of them. No, there's absolutely no reason to. And they, they, they're trying to hide it under that cover of, of research. So it's, it's completely ridiculous what they're doing. And, yeah, they're breaking all kinds of laws. And, you know, people accuse us of us being doing illegal stuff. But we show it. There's cameras, there's everything. We're trying to show what they are doing. And, you know, they should stop. Do other ships ever pass by? Sailing ships, merchant ships. We're in one of the most remote areas of the world. So you Where know, are you? Uh, right in the Ross Sea, right off the coast of Antarctica, about 2,000 miles from anybody, really. Uh, if anything happened, uh, rescue would be days away. How far from Australia? About 2,000 miles. How far are they from Japan? Uh, about 7,000 yep. miles. 7,000 miles. Yes. They travel that distance. They go all the way down there. It's an extremely... Uh, they, have to, they have to kill 760 whales just to break even. That's our objective, to make sure they don't take those 760 whales, and we've been able to achieve that. Mm -hmm. Ever hit any bad storms? All the time. <laughs>
<laughs> this is not funny to me. <laughs> it uh, is, uh, this is not a big laugh. Well, you know, when when I say that is that it's you know the, the weather will change from a perfectly nice day to 100 miles an hour just in 20 minutes. I mean, we we we're, we have to be prepared for some very horrendous storms. Well, I salute you. I salute you all. It's great to have the show back, and I hope that someday you don't need this show. Uh, well, in fact, we're, 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 we, we'd be very happy if we can get the show off the air by winning that battle down That's there. That's the way to win it, get yeah. the Absolutely. show off the air. Thank you all very much. Captain Paul Watson, Chris Altman, Shannon Mann, and Lawrence DeGroote of this extraordinary show, Whale Wars, back tomorrow night on Animal Planet. Right now, Anderson Cooper and AC 360.